Hello, friends and family, and welcome to everybody's favorite global pandemic crippling anxiety meditation hour. Um, today, uh, well, before we begin, um, for anyone who doesn't know me, I am not a meditation teacher, and this is not meditation instruction. Uh, this is just a discussion about meditation in general, followed by a 10-minute anapana breath meditation. <clears throat> Today, we will be talking about a question that my friend's mom actually asked me um, a couple of days ago. And the question was fairly simple. Um, how can I improve my focus? And how can I stay focused for longer? And it wasn't a question about meditation. It was a question about um, focus in in life in general and there are of course a number of potential answers useful answers um, the reason that uh, f for her I kept highlighting Anapana meditation is because it is very much a sort of clean room for running an experiment to test your own focus and to improve your focus. There are other meditation objects other than the breath. And there's certainly nothing wrong with those meditation objects. They will focus your concentration, um, a mantra, an image, eyes open or eyes closed, um, real or imaginary. Um, these sorts of things, um, a concentrated idea, um, they have one difficulty, and that difficulty is that they are unchanging. So when you meditate on a mantra, when you meditate on a philosophy, an idea, um, that philosophy or idea, that mantra is static. It may change ever, ever so slightly, but even the changes itself will be consistent within your mind. Um, and ultimately, you're observing something imaginary. Um, and so this static imaginary thing is actually what makes it easier to meditate on those sorts of objects. And it's part of the value of using anapan, even, even if you're only using anapana meditation um, for this simple purpose of, um, of building up concentration and focus. It's part of the value of anapan that the target, the object of your meditation is constantly changing. It's your breaths are getting large, they're getting small, it may take some time, but they're they're changing continuously. And there's also the the back and forth, in and out, vacillation of the breath. And there is certainly difficulty in that. It's harder to meditate on a thing which is constantly changing than it is um, to meditate on a mantra or an image. But the value is that the practice in terms of how it applies to your everyday life outside of meditation is a little more direct. So if what you want to focus on is a book and the book is challenging and you want to maintain your attention for longer periods of time, you don't want your mind to wander while you're reading the book, you want to stay focused. You have a task that you want to accomplish and you want to stay focused on that. Um, your task, your book, it, it is also constantly changing. Um, it's not like a mantra. It's not like a static image. 
And so learning to stay focused um, on an ever-changing thing is actually the skill that you need to develop in these situations. And there is a, a whole suite of other reasons why the breath is a very helpful meditation object. Um, the fact that it is real, the fact that it carries no ideas or ideals. Um, but all of that aside, um, the breath is particularly valuable for maintaining your focus um, in, a, in a total clean room. And when I say a total clean room, I mean in the, in the experimental sense that um, you don't want your experiment, if you're running a real experiment as a scientist, you don't want your experiment polluted by external um, biology, dust, um, anything else. So you run your experiment in a clean room so that you can control variables. And the same is true for Anapan meditation, where um, external variables amount to um, anything you infuse the meditation with. So if you infuse the meditation with a certain philosophy, if you infuse the meditation with a certain idea, if you infuse the meditation with a certain sound, internal or external, um, you've essentially brought something into the clean room. It's a part of your experiment now. And um, it makes the experiment less pure than if you bring nothing at all. Um, no ideas, no preconceptions. Um, just uh, this thing I have with me already. Um, and so I, uh, I would advocate for this as an approach to learning to focus. Um, and there's quite a wide spectrum here in terms of what we mean by focus. Some people mean, am I able to sit down to a task and immediately or very quickly get straight to the task and start accomplishing things. And for other people, focus is, is less sharp. <laughs> um, here, focus might mean, I mean, especially in today's climate, I can't help thinking about the news. I can't help thinking about politics. I can't help thinking about the people who are suffering. Um, I'm agonizing over, um, these are real things, but if, I, if I'm trying to cook dinner or if I'm trying to wash the dishes, these are not helpful things. They're, they're not helping me wash the dishes. And I'm not helping anybody by agonizing over them while I wash the dishes. We all know this, um, but we still do it. We still agonize over things outside of our control in situations where our anger and our frustration helps no one, us least of all. And this kind of focus, I'm washing the dishes now, I will worry about racial inequality when I go back to the computer, when I go to write a letter, when I go to make a donation. That's when I'll worry about racial inequality but not while I'm washing the dishes. While I'm washing the dishes, I would like to just focus on the dishes because that's what's real, that's what's in front of me. I'll worry about coronavirus when I go to the store. I won't forget to take my mask. I won't forget to wash my hands. Um, good, good. <laughs> but if you spend all day worrying about coronavirus, worrying about coronavirus, the dishes won't get washed. And, or maybe they'll get washed, but you'll wind up getting sick um, emotionally, mentally, and possibly physically if you spend 24 hours a day agonizing over this thing. And you only have so much in your control. Um, the amount that you have in your control is whether or not you wear a mask, whether or not you wash your hands. And this is, this is also focus, to be able to concern yourself with what is relevant when it is relevant. 
Um, and Anapana helps with this. Um, it will help you focus your attention on, um, on social justice or a pandemic or politics or anything else that is going on in the world that you want to pay attention to sometimes but not 24 hours a day because it will it will become crippling for you um this is also a form of focus and and this is sort of a a spectrum from from these sort of very practical everyday kinds of focus where i want to control what has my attention i don't just want whatever happens to be grabbing my attention um, gets my attention instantly and keeps it. Um, and then there's a progression right to this other side where on the other side you have productivity and um, being more effective and, and all those sorts of things with have, which have uh, very little to do um, ultimately with keeping your mind off of coronavirus and, and more to do with learning to narrow your attention. But um, Anapan uh, actually spans both fields. Um, and uh, this side is sort of introductory, right? This is where the mind keeps wandering away, the mind keeps getting captured <laughs> by something that wants our attention, or we want to give our attention away. Um, we want to put our attention on this thing and it becomes an obsession. Um, it becomes a constant focus for us over and over again. And, um, and this, is, uh, this is the practice um, of bringing our attention back to the breath, um, which is pulling ourselves away from that. That's the half which is pulling ourselves away. Oh, okay, I, well, so, whoops, mind wandered away again. Okay, back on, back on the breath. Um, and I'm on the breath for some time, and then the mind wanders away again. And then after some time, the mind will remain with the breath um, for an extended period of time. And then what you find is, is you start building on the other side. This um, attention on the breath becomes a skill that you can hone. So it becomes narrower, 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 penetrating slicing it becomes more of an instrument um, so over here it's somewhat blunt over here it, it's very sharp um, but it's the same tool the whole way across um, we have uh, time for 10 minutes of meditation We can meditate together for 10 minutes. I have my timer here. If you have a timer, you can start your own. You can pause the video too, of course, if you need uh, to grab your phone or whatever you use as a timer. Often it's better if it's not a phone or if you do use your phone, maybe airplane mode it for the 10 minutes. It'll, it'll help, <laughs> even if no one's bothering you right now. Um, okay, I'll start my timer. No.
that's our timer for today. Thanks for sitting with me, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. I hope everyone is staying healthy and staying safe. Goodbye.